You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is Kathy's Dream by Milova Anastasia Du. It was the night before Christmas and Kathy was heading home. To her, it was just another night of the week that would be followed by another exhausting day at work. Her plans for Christmas didn't include family dinners or celebrations of any kind. She could not afford to waste her time. In the back of her mind, she could still hear the words of her mother, who had interrupted her work with multiple phone calls a few hours ago. You don't appreciate Christmas like you used to, Kathy. I miss the old times, when you couldn't wait to come home and celebrate with us. Do you remember how you insisted on having the last word on the tree decoration? And then you sat for hours watching the fairy lights blinking and singing Christmas carols with your father? I don't recognize you anymore. Kathy remained calm and firm each time she explained the reasons she could not join the traditional family dinner the next day. It was the only way to convince her mother her decision was final. She was disappointed that her mother couldn't accept the fact that she was now an adult with responsibilities. Her job was demanding, requiring her full dedication if she wanted to stay on top. And that was Kathy's intention. In a competitive world, she was determined to do her best to keep her position in the firm, climb higher, and get the promotion which would grant her a better salary and a more comfortable life. Why wouldn't a mom want that for her daughter? A little girl in pajamas with a festive red cap on her head caught Kathy's eye. As she crossed the bridge that led to the other side of town, to the luxurious new house she'd moved into with her husband after his latest promotion. Instinctively, she pulled over. Late as it was, her car was the only one on the bridge, a fact that surprised her until she remembered that on Christmas Eve, there's usually no traffic, as most people are already home celebrating, spending time with family and friends around the Christmas tree, eating and drinking the night away. Are you lost? She asked the girl, who turned around to face Kathy with a big smile on her face. To Kathy's surprise, the girl did not seem frightened at all. Instead, her face radiated with joy, as if the Christmas spirit shone from within her. She looked like a little lost Santa, with her festive cap and her red pajamas, only she was much thinner, shorter, and beardless. I've been waiting for you said the girl as she ran into Kathy's arms, before Kathy had time to react. Kathy knelt to better observe the girl's face. Her eyes looked familiar, but Kathy reminded herself that all children looked similarly cute and sweet. Maybe it's the innocence reflected in their eyes, blurring their characteristics into a sweetness which could be confusing to adult, rational eyes, especially to Kathy's eyes that were tired after a very long week at work. Oh no, said the little girl, frowning. Taking one step back, it was her turn to observe the adult woman who was standing in front of her. You are not happy. Your eyes look so sad. Of course I'm happy. How did you come up with such an idea? You can't fool me, you know. How could you fool me? she said, giggling. Kathy felt her patience slipping, but before she had a chance to say anything, the girl spoke. I've always liked painting. Are you a painter yet? No, I'm not a painter, but I... How can you not be a painter? The girl interrupted her in disappointment. It did not take long for her to get her excitement back. Are you married to your true love? Yes, I am married. Well, that's not enough. Are you married to the love of your life? Kathy thought about it for a while. It was a tough question. She had found a responsible, dependable, ambitious man and considered herself happily married. But the love of her life. It was a childish question, and she could feel herself growing angry, feeling obliged to justify her choices to a little lost kid. Not too angry, 
but the kind of angry a little kid can make you feel with naive questions you'd prefer to not answer, not even to yourself. Kathy had not realized she looked down in shame until she lifted her eyes to discover that the girl had vanished. As she ran to her car to grab her phone and call the police, she saw the girl flying as an angel. She watched her throw her little red cap into the river as she waved. What's going on here? She thought to herself. Please make me proud, Kathy. I expect much more. The little angel shouted from afar. How do you know my name? I'm Kathy, too. The little Kathy you used to be. Determined to be a painter and find my true love yelled the girl, vanishing into the sky. Driving back home, Kathy started to remember a vague dream from her childhood she had long forgotten. On Christmas Day, she took off. She left a note for her husband, put some clothes in a suitcase, and left. Her mother was happy to see her. Look what I found, Kathy. Weren't you the sweetest little girl back then? She said, holding a photo of Kathy as a kid, in red pajamas, and a little red cap on her head. It was the most magical Christmas back then. I remember you lost that red cap, and you insisted that you threw it in a river during the night while flying. You had such a vivid imagination as a kid. Merry Christmas, Mother, said Kathy, embracing the old lady and making a silent promise to make proud that little girl she once used to be. I will never let you down again, she mumbled. To her mother, or perhaps to the little girl in the picture. This was Kathy's Dream by Milova Anastasia Du. Milova is a neurologist living and working in Athens, Greece. Her work can be found in Ophi Press Magazine, Infective Ink, The Molotov Cocktail, Folate Oak, HFC Journal, Down in the Drift, Minus Paper, Massacre, Pandora, Maudlin House, Menacing Hedge, Scarlet Leaf Review, Nebula Rift, Idler, Literature Online, and soon in Midnight Circus, Antipodian SF, Big Echo Critical SF, The Ham, Blood and Thunder, Musings on the Art of Medicine, Hindered Souls, Sick Lit, The Potomac, Front Porch Review, Jellyfish Review, and The Fear of Monkeys. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Evix and 600 Second Saga.